okay gang, we're gonna look at this, this following setup. It's gonna take us through the next six multiple choice questions. And, and what I would recommend is pausing this video and trying to do these problems on your own, and then come back to the video and see if you got the questions right and the concepts right. So this would be a great time to just practice these problems on your own now that we've been through a few of those free response together. All right, so again, like I said, if you got a moment, just pause them, try them on your own and see what um, what the answers are when you get back or when you unpause. All right, so here we go. A farmer is testing the effects of four different fertilizers on the yields of a certain variety of tomato plants. The four fertilizers are applied to each of five different tomato plants and the number of tomatoes produced by each plant is recorded. So I'm just gonna remember it says number of tomatoes is recorded. All right, the table below gives the actual data and the mini tab output gives the results of the one-way ANOVA. All right, so if we take a look at it, it looks like this 33, again, not a frequency count, this is a numerical variable because this is the number of tomatoes produced. So this particular tomato plant was given fertilizer A and it gave the, the farmer 33 tomatoes. And then a different plant had fertilizer A, it gave the farmer 29 and so on and so forth. All right, so that's looking like mid 30s, right? Mid to low 30s is the average here. Um, fertilizer B doesn't look as hot, right? Look, the high here was 26 and the low was 16. That's, that looks a lot different than fertilizer A. Fertilizer C looks pretty solid, right? Pretty comparable to fertilizer A. Fertilizer D might be on the lower side, but still semi-comparable to A and C. So it looks like something might be up with B, just as I look at the data. All that aside, I'm in mean land, all right? So let me go ahead and write that down. I'm in mean land. Okay, my variable here is the number of tomatoes produced. I have four levels, all right, because my factor is fertilizer. So I have four levels or four groups, which means I'm gonna run that F test. And I have the mini tab output for one way ANOVA. All right, um, and just before I get going on here, uh, numbers to keep in mind, because I had four levels, I know K is four, and because there were five of each plant, or five plants um, for each fertilizer, I had 20 tomato plants in general, and then I was producing hopefully a lot of tomatoes. All right, so let's take a look. Here's my mini tab. I've got the degrees of freedom between, right, between the four fertilizers, there would be three degrees of freedom. Within the four fertilizers, there's 16 degrees of freedom because we would go N minus K. And yes, I would have 19 degrees of freedom in total. It looks like here are the numbers for the sum of the squares, the mean of those squares, there is my F test statistic, and there is my P value. Okay, so I have all of that stuff in there. Um, let me scroll down a bit. Let's take a look at what was happening towards the bottom of this. All right, so we see the problem coming in, or the first multiple choice question coming into play, but I, let's take a moment and just chat about these confidence intervals. If I asked you to take a look at these confidence intervals, all right, just taking a look at it here, it said um, the average yield for fertilizer A was 34.6 tomatoes, 20.2 for fertilizer B, another 34.6 and 31.6 for C and D respectively. Here were their standard deviations, okay? So we made some confidence intervals based off of that. And it looks like here's my statistic, plus a margin of error, minus a margin of error, right? Here's my statistic, 20.2 plus a margin of error, minus a margin of error, right? Plus a margin of error, minus a margin of error from 34.6. And for fertilizer D, 31.6 plus a margin of error, minus a margin of error. Okay, that's all fine and good. But if I asked you, just based on these confidence intervals, which fertilizer is the best. Which fertilizer is the best? So take a look at those confidence intervals and you tell me which fertilizer is the best. All right, I think most of us can get behind the idea that fertilizer B seems to be the worst of the four fertilizers in our experiment, right? You say, oh, well, I definitely don't wanna use B. And that's great. So fertilizer B is the worst, and we're gonna come back to why it's the worst in a moment, other than the fact that it just stinks, so it's the worst. All right, but which fertilizer is best? Did you actually tell me you don't know? 
Did you say, I can't tell? Because that's the answer. You don't know which one is best. All right, and many students will tell me, oh, it's either fertilizer A or C, that's the best. And the reason behind that is you see this high upper bound on your confidence interval, and you say, oh, well, fertilizer A and B has the, the highest upper bound, so it must be the best. But again, you, you don't know. It's entirely possible. It's entirely possible that the mean, the true mean, the, and when I say the true mean, I mean the true average number of tomatoes produced by fertilizer A is down here at 30. That's in its confidence interval. Okay, it's possible fertilizer C was over at 31, and it's possible that fertilizer D is actually the highest up here at 35. So you need to be really careful before you tell me, oh, since these have that highest upper bound, they're definitely one of the better fertilizers. It's very possible that D is actually the best, and just through sampling variation or chance, its sample mean was lower than the sample means that we got from A or C. So fertilizer being the best is definitely a possibility. And the reason we would say here, I don't know, is because the confidence intervals overlap. Because there's overlap, we cannot determine which fertilizer is best. And on the flip of that, because there's no overlap, with fertilizer B, right? You can see the interval for fertilizer B does not overlap. There's some actual space here. So because the interval for fertilizer B does not overlap with the other intervals, we know it's the worst, right? Even on fertilizer B's best day, if we took its best day up here around 24 tomatoes, that would still be worse than fertilizer D's worst day, which is somewhere around 28 tomatoes. So even if fertilizer B had the best possible scenario, and fertilizer D had the worst possible scenario, D still beats B. So again, because there is no overlap for fertilizer B, we know it's the worst. So there was overlap for fertilizer A, C, and D. All right, but because fertilizer B is flying solo over there, we actually can say it's the worst. All right. So then I asked you, what was the factor here? And the factor, again, it's a categorical um, term. It's just how are we grouping these, these four different groups? We were grouping them by fertilizer. All right, so we're gonna flip the page and then we're gonna finish this problem out. I'll see you in a bit, bye. Okay, let's answer these last few multiple choice questions. This is the experimental units for this experiment is or are. Now this is a vocab term, experimental units from way back in chapter one. All right, but we are at the end of the semester and, and we're getting ready for our final. So experimental units, a vocab term from back in chapter one. And an experimental unit is a single object or individual that's to be measured. So what were we actually measuring? We weren't measuring the farmer. We weren't measuring the fertilizer. We weren't measuring the tomatoes. We were measuring the tomato plants, right? We were counting, I should say, the number of plants, or excuse me, the number of tomatoes that got produced. So this was what was actually receiving the treatment. We were putting the fertilizers onto the tomato plants. All right, if you were testing for equality of mean tomato yield, then computed the test, oh, then the computed test statistic value would be, all right, I'm gonna go back to my mini tab. Let's find the computed test statistic. So if I peel this back, I'm seeing my test statistic of 15.87. Now you absolutely could go to your calculator and put this in L1, L2, L3, L4 and run ANOVA. You're more than welcome to, but there's the output. I'm just gonna read it from the mini tab. So if I look at this, I see B as my answer, okay? All right, so moving from there, if we scooch this up, all right, so here I'm trying to find out if you were to test for equality of mean yield, the degrees of freedom between and within for the distribution of the test statistic would be. All right, well, let's see what our degrees of freedom would be. So if I look at that mini tab output, whoops, excuse me. If we look at that mini tab output, it looks like my degrees of freedom between are three and my degrees of freedom within are 16. So let's find that option. There we go, three and 16, great cruising right along. All right, let me move this up some more. 
And let's see, actually let's get both of these in view just so we can wrap this problem up. Let me just keep scooching up till I got everything. That's looking good. All right, so it says, if you were to test at the 5% level of significance for equality of average tomato yield, your decision would be, all right, are we gonna fail to reject or reject? Let's find out. What was our p-value here? So let me peel this back again. If I'm looking at it, ooh, look at our p-value. It looks like it was zero. So if my p-value is zero, I'm definitely gonna reject the null. So I'm gonna get rid of A and C. All right, am I gonna reject the alternate? We never reject an alternate, we reject the null. So that's gonna be my answer. Okay, based on the mini tab, one can conclude that the average tomato yield using fertilizer A is significantly different from the average yield using fertilizer C and D, all right? The average yield using fertilizer B is significantly different from the average of using A, C, and D. The average tomato yield of fertilizer C is significantly different or D is significantly different. So let's figure out which yield did we think was significantly different. And if we remember my spiel from this page, all right, I was mentioning, let me scooch this up so we have it. We were talking about based on the confidence intervals, which fertilizer can we say is significantly different? And it was fertilizer B because fertilizer B did not have any overlap in the confidence interval. So fertilizer B was significantly different than A, C, or D. And in fact, we couldn't say that any of these were necessarily different from each other because of the overlap. When it comes to comparing confidence intervals, we're very interested in overlap. So in terms of this answer, right, as mentioned previously, since the confidence interval for fertilizer B does not overlap with the other confidence intervals, we know fertilizer B is significantly different, and specifically it's significantly less in terms of the tomato yield than the other three fertilizers. So if we're looking at an answer here, the one that lines up with is answer B, okay? All right, so with that, we're at the end of chapter 13. So we're just gonna summarize what we got and then wrap up the semester, gang. All right, see you in a bit, bye.